Hello, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Drunken Tarrasque, where all we want for Christmas is to pass our saving throws. Today I have with me is Rachel. Hi. And I'm Michael. <laughs> and we want to talk to you guys about the most important session for your game. Yep. It's session zero. <laughs> yes, it Abled is. Abled session zero. And, yeah. and not, enough, not nearly enough people take this seriously. Uh, like they should. But, or they forget about it. <laughs> or they forget about it entirely. And, and it's understandable why, because, you know, oftentimes it's just people with their close group of friends that are doing this, that are running a game, and they feel like, okay, well, you know, maybe we don't have to go through all this stuff. That's a mistake. <laughs> yes. Um, as many people you have in the game, it becomes ultimately more important for session zero. Because the more people you add, the more natural conf uh, conflictions, different interpretations, different points of view may possibly clash, and you kind of want to mitigate that a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and the first thing we should probably t uh, say is what session zero is. Yes. Um, and the short, short version of that is it's laying out what kind of game that the DM plans on doing, and what kind of characters that the, the player is planning on making. And uh, usually it's also a, well, at least what we like to do is we also like to have that be the the point where we're doing character creation. Mm -hmm. So we let everybody know uh, what folks are building, what their plans on the plans are, and uh, and go from there. Yeah. But, but, but you can really discuss anything you mm -hmm. want in, in session zero. Think of it as kind of like if you're making sort of a, a social contract between the players and the DM of, of trust and respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, session zero is the moment where a lot is put forth for the um, the whole entire group. Um, I, as I would say, it's always personal rules and boundaries are set out, and that is the f biggest foundation. You want a strong foundation for your group over everything, because if you do not have this, more often than not, your games will suffer one way or the other, or they may get bogged down by unnecessary issues that may crop up that you didn't see beforehand or you didn't think were important to begin with. Mm. Um, a lot, well, yeah. Sorry. Well, the, 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 <laughs> no, but, but the, the situation that you're in is um, players will spend a long time creating their character and the DM will spend a long time uh, building the game. And the reason, like I said before, that you want to have this session zero, this session that happens before you have your very first play session is that way there aren't any surprises. Like you, you, the, the game isn't going to consist of something that you're not okay with. Mm -hmm. The players aren't going to do something that is, is off the, the rails, but mm -hmm. and if those things occur, you How can you always go back. It? Yeah. It, it's like almost like a business contract when you, where you lay out the, the things that, you know, this is what I expect of you, this is what you expect of me. Well, as, as Rachel pointed out, uh, it's essentially all these little rules, and I think the biggest one that everyone needs to come to terms with is how mature, and not the quote-unquote mature, but the actual mature you want this material to go, because you do have sometimes people of different ages, different backgrounds, and different experiences, and you kind of want to make sure this is for everyone's enjoyment and Unless everyone agrees upon, you want to go really dark and gritty. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. A, a game should always, first and foremost, be fun. The moment that it stops being fun is the time that you need to, to ask whether or not everybody involved in your session zero has kept up their, you know, their end of the bargain. Like, has the DM respected the players? Have the players respected the DM's game um, and aren't trying to break the game? Mm -hmm. What's what's going on there? <laughs> and speaking of breaking the game, and one of the bigger things I think is very important as a DM is to know what style play styles are of your player. There are different types of players, and we'll go into that later on in a different episode, but the biggest one is, do you have murder hobos? Do you have role players? Do you have dramas? Do you have mad scientists, scientists running through your game? Or do you have that guy in your group as players? Mm hmm. As, and, and you can do a whole game where it's just nothing but murder hobo simulator, where you're just going and hacking and slashing through everything. But as long as everybody knows that that's what's going on, and that's mm -hmm. what, you, what everybody wants, 
it's totally fine. But if you have somebody who's going into the game and they're expecting to be able to do a lot more role playing than they're getting to do, and everybody else wants to be a murder hobo, then you know you conflict will arise <laughs> and people yeah. will feel frustrated and stressed out. Uh, it would be equivalent of a role player role playing with the DM talking to a um, person, just talking to an interrogator person, and one of the murder hobos gets bored and then kills the guy that's interrogating. There's nothing wrong with those actions going on, but that is one of those conflicts Session Zero would stop because one of the things that... Important thing about understanding Session Zero, and it, and it does connect with character types of players, not all players will get along, not all styles work together, and when you bring with Session Zero, it's right okay to say, hey, I prefer a murder hobo simulator. You don't want to play, you don't want to run a murder hobo simulator. I'm out. Thank you for the offer. Because it's going to make sure everyone has an enjoyable time. And you start to get an idea of red flags about maybe a new person that's coming into the group just starting out this game for the first time when you're able to go over their character sheet. Mm-hmm. Because they'll start telling you what kind of character they're they're interested in making, what their name is, what they look like. You get to you get to understand if you know is this <laughs> what kind of character is going on here? Mm-hmm. Is this is this something that's going to be good? Because sometimes you get good vibes. It's not all oh, yeah. bad. Sometimes oh, yeah. you're like, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. I better up my game too. <laughs> uh, the style I prefer running for the most part is more of the role playing or what I've heard is called as the actor. And it's because you put energy into your character, who they are. You focus on the individual. And for that type of game style, it is very good to have very like-minded individuals who work together with that. And I had a couple people who turned into munchkiners and murder hobos, and that did adversely affect the games. And I made the mistake of not... And this is all, this is happens. Your session zero, your social contract with the players, the more you do this as DM and players, it will grow in length because you will see the different players come around later in the game, how they affect you. And don't worry, your first session zero will be infinitely different from each session zero because you'll learn from every game you've played. And it just, it will just slowly rack up over time. And there's nothing wrong with that. And with session zero, everyone including the players, big note-taking. Because it sets Mm -hmm. the groundwork for everyone to understand this is what we're doing, these are our boundaries, and these are the homebrew rules or personal rules interpretations this DM takes as very important. And, as Rachel did with one of her characters, intertwining it within the story because of a background you chose... (laughs) <laughs> that's another thing if you're going over stuff together as a group you get the idea the dm will be able to have better ideas as to what they can do what they can work with um Customers that you've already too. yeah that you've already put forth <laughs> in your character sheet in your background uh you may not even have everything figured out for your character when you're in session zero it's just a, a baseline understanding that everybody has uh of where you're going of where the DM is going with this. And so that they generally get to figure out whether whether or not they actually want to show up for session one to begin with. Oh, yeah. And, and I think a lot of DMs feel pressured to just kind of go along with whatever their players want. But this is the time, the session zero, to tell them, no, I'm not okay with this. No, this oh, yeah. is not the kind of game that I'm going to run. Um, uh, this is what I expect from you as a player. Um, and this is the kind of game that's going to be run, and you can take it or leave it. Yeah, that, now, that is the time. <laughs> now, here's the thing. As Rachel put it, it may sound harsh. That may sound um, adversarial. It is not. And I will, I will ultimately defend that point of view because uh, the games I've played and the games I've taken part of with other DMs have fallen apart and have gotten to the point where no one's enjoying themselves and they are just slogging through it just to say they finished the session, finished the game, and Mm -hmm. you don't want to be wasting time after time of hours after hours of a boring or frustrating or stressful game because there was no session zero, no one agreed upon the rules, or the rules were just made up willy-nilly halfway through and kept on getting changed because that will ultimately affect everyone's enjoyment. And, and uh, 
th this isn't really about um, sorry what, what I'm getting to, this is ultimately about um, uh, protection for you the player and for you the DM mm -hmm. because like I said there's a lot of time and effort and energy that's going to go into this and if you're not having fun if you're kind of feeling pressured to just sort of be there mm -hmm. like what's the point there's no point this is supposed to like I said this is all about fun mm -hmm. like if you're if you're just there because your friends want you to be there like you're not having fun. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. There's nothing wrong if you just want to be with your plain player uh, friends and roll some dice, and you mm -hmm. openly say to the DM, "Hey, I love you guys. Want to role play? But I just kind of want to just roll some dice and be with you guys." Then you already know. Hey, this guy just wants to be a dice chucker with us and have a good time. So okay, I already know. I don't engage him the same way as I would engage Rachel, who wants to have this deep, rich story, or how I'd, I'd engage. Brandon, another one of the guys who's a very experienced 20-year veteran in this, of how he would want to have his character with this deep, rich story and intertwining in a different direction. and Or there mm. might be someone who just wants to steal pets and have them as animals. <laughs> like your sister. <laughs> yes, like my sister, which, which, which everyone enjoyed because it made sense for her character. And like we had a minor session zero where she says, yeah, I just want to do these little things and just kind of chuck dice. It was more or less to be with people and kind of get one same little object with her. Everyone was exactly. like, oh, that's fine. And this is just the way that you can each get what you want out of this, out of this game, out of your gameplay. Uh, that way the, the DM can, can prepare better, you as a player can prepare. And that's really what, what all of this stuff is, is, mm -hmm. is ultimately about. Um, it, it's just making sure that you're not there bored out of your mind. You're like, why am I here? Oh my god. And then you're like playing with your phone or something instead. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, somebody else. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's all on to on. make it a, as smooth as possible. And it's with, when you have these rules from session zero and they change from system to system, which is another important point is knowing which system you're going to play and which you'll agree to. It's also that when these roles or some issues come up or you have problems, you will have two responses and it's on both sides of the fence. Neither one is innocent or purely guilty. Um, you may have a player that does, is getting frustrated that the DM's not holding up their end of the bargain or has gotten grown bored of the game because they don't care and they start turning into a murder hobo or a terrorist in a game or a DM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that was, that was me. Yeah, but, but that was a different DM, so I'm not going to murder you. And Nobody's... as I, <laughs> but, but like, but like you were saying earlier, this is also the time for players to engage with the DM and say, okay, these particular things I'm not okay with. Like you were talking earlier about um, different systems, about ma yeah, about maturity and and differences in systems and things like that. Some of these systems, uh, and and the backgrounds of these worlds are really dark. And it's got some serious subject matter. And um, the DM needs to know how far to go. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how bad is this going to be before uh, people start feeling uncomfortable? Oh, yeah. And for me as a DM, I can go pretty far. And I'm very much always pointing out, remember, I you guys agreed I can go as dark as possible, and I will go there. And as long as you guys are okay with it, yeah, how how far how far are we allowed to go? How far is the DM allowed to go? Where is your comfort mm -hmm. zone? That is that's what we need to mm -hmm. to, to outline in in this. Well, not only with comfort zone. Um, uh, sorry to break in. Um, was sorry. also um, are you as a DM going to allow player versus player combat? And this is where f a lot of the systems, a lot of the games. I do not encourage that type of idea because they're not inherently designed for the game. But also to be clear that hypothetically you build a character that happened to be doing some dastardly stuff in their past, may have harmed innocent people in unseen manners that we don't want to talk about, and other players come out. For me, I look at it like this. you If you find out something horrible, like the guy's a traitor, and it's a player character, and you kill them, it's kind of one of those rules, like, are you going to allow that, or are you going to allow it? it has to be negotiated out? Because player versus player conflict can arise, and you could accidentally create a dumpster baby. Oh yeah, like in our yeah. in our dark heresy campaign. I mean, to to really talk about about this, we we went from playing uh, 
D&D 5th edition to playing uh, Warhammer uh, Dark Heresy. And the difference is there is that uh, if you do certain things, if you're guilty of certain things, like we had a psyker and they were engaging in a, a use of a lot of magic and um, usually uh, the way that the world goes is that character would have been dead a long time ago, but because she was our friend, we kind of just let it go. <laughs> kind of just, d- well, just didn't. But well, it, the- it kind of breaks immersion to do that. Well, one of the good things was um, what Rachel and Brandon did, which kept it in character, was they literally go, Psyker, you touch that magic one more time, we're blowing your brains out. Yeah, you're going into the wood chipper. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to put and, you on a black ship. <laughs> well, that was, wait, wait, that is great role playing from the role players. The problem is the psyker wanted to be a mad scientist, which essentially does not function with a group of role players. They, it's very almost impossible for that. We had another one who um, wanted to antagonize not only the characters, but players. And that I've even said from the beginning, never antagonize your fellow player. If you do so, I let the reins go because that is uncalled for. And I let the dice rain down on you. <laughs> And it's mainly those are my biggest things. Like I say, consequences. <laughs> hmm. And it may seem like we're trying to we're trying to bog down with a bunch of rules and things like that. But honestly, this stuff is is like I said for your pr- protection and for your fun. People can feel like really burdened by the rules, like they can't really do something. But this actually helps. Like one of I think our our table rules is that if it's funny, if it entertains the DM. And it's it's relevant to the plot. He's mm. gonna let it slide. <laughs> like he's gonna let it slide. Oh yeah, like he's gonna be you, fine with it. Yeah, like if you get turned into a little <laughs> animal or something like that, and you start acting silly, but for a humorous effect to gain like, uh, like gain your people's attention, so someone else can slide through and get an advantage on their check. And like, yeah, I'm I'm all for it because you may be breaking things, but you're 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 just tweaking it. So hey, I'm being funny, so everyone's laughing. But at the same time, helping on another character where it's like, yeah, that's that's one of my my basic rules. Rule of cool, rule of fun, and you don't warp the reality of the world for everything. And and here's another thing to think about in all of this is that you're not as bogged down as the average player or DM used to be. It used to be that, you know, it was just gonna be something local in your own town. Now you can you can do this online. You can use roll twenty uh, you can do all of these things to find a group and play online, and that's that's fantastic. And what that means is that you can you can go and you can try and find that that DM that'll let you do the entertaining stuff, mm-hmm. the funny stuff. If you had a DM that had like a big stick up their ass last time. <laughs> oh yeah, it's 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 one of the other things is for someone like me. If I had known several of the DMs in my past were going to be very um, TPK heavy men- mentality. I would never have joined them, mainly because, um, or the other thing is, if a DM says I'm not uh, going to be total party killing type of mentality, uh, and then goes, hey, and they intentionally start trying to kill your characters, that's the right way of just walking out. And this is why why this first Session Zero is so important. We're bar- As Rachel said, we're walking down really heavily with these rules and these, these, these warnings because of all our negative experiences that this, every single time we put these rules forth, it's lessened the issues we've um, had to deal with. And this is mainly, uh, the, I think the idea that we're trying to get across here, the reason why we're we're suggesting this and we're we're saying that this is not this is not as much of an option. This this should not be optional, is because we come at this from the perspective of wanting to uh, to to help you find better gameplay, uh, to help you have a better time. And in, in generally be able to to stay together as a group in your own group, oh, yeah. and um, and be able to build a stronger group that is able to stay together and weather through these things. I mean, if if you want to do a game, and you have like one friend who doesn't want to do it, um, they can sit that out, and then you you know that you can just go spend time with them in a different way, mm-hmm. because it's it's not their thing, or you can accommodate them in some way. That's how you, you're you able to keep these things together. Like, not too long ago, there was, I think a hashtag was like tabletop, I think Thursday or something like that, where it was asking, how do I, how do I as a DM handle uh, 
handle conflicts between players, like things like if they're having a, a political conflict. Well, you, you can have ground rules at your table saying that you leave those things at the door, that when, when you come to the table or when you come online and you, you come into the session, that, that this is, you leave all of those things behind you. That you, you try to be polite, you try to be respectful, and you, uh, try to be trustworthy. And I think those things right there are going to guarantee that you have the best time that you can. Yeah. Session Zero is more than just the game, it's also your friendships with people, which, uh, these games can fracture friendships depending on how bad they go. And, I think we. I think I have. I think the best next subject is dealing with the D and D breakup because of when a session zero shows that a person will not respect your rules, it can have catastrophic, uh, lasting effects. Mm. And that's ultimately what, what I'm getting down to with the whole trust and respect thing. That if uh, if you lay down these ground rules as a DM, or uh, you're you lay down individual rules as a player, and these things are violated and disrespected, and there's there's seemingly no way that you can talk this through. It, it's it's time to leave. Mm-hmm. It's time to leave that group, uh, and and maybe these people behind because you're gonna learn some stuff about these people in a game session that you never thought possible. <laughs> like yeah. you, you you never know uh, what people are capable of until they can do anything. Yeah, that's because this is the moment as a DM, as a player, you have ultimate control, pure agency, godlike powers. And when that happens, you get to see how people react when they are given the ability to hit the nuclear button left and right and center. And some people treat it with respect and go, I don't want to touch it. And then there's some people will go, shiny red button, must press, must press, must press. Yep. Yeah. And like I said, this is this is what you're going to encounter. You're going to encounter at least one group where people are assholes. Oh, at least one. <laughs> or, or unkind to you, or there's going to be somebody who's going to be untrustworthy and disrespectful to you, and they're going to disrespect your, uh, your boundaries. Like, let's say, for example, you say that there's something about abuse that bothers you. Like, maybe you were abused in the past or something, and you say, like, okay... Uh, excessive abuse of children or something like that is just it it it, it messes with me, dude. Like, don't don't put that mm-hmm. in there. It's just gonna or or animals or something like that's gonna really seriously bother me. Uh, if you do that, if you if you tell someone that and they do it anyway, and they go to that that mm-hmm. next level, like you you have the right to leave at that point mm-hmm. well, or and, say that you're not okay with that. Well, here's what I would do if it's plot centric or plot important. And a DM, this is this is this is where I would go like this. Someone says, "I can't handle abuse like that." I would go, "The next session will be having that scene in there. If you wish to excuse yourself from the table, if you wish just to go, "Hey, I'm not going to be there that session," and I'm just going to just do that. This this is why I say session zero. It's a very important one. Like. If, Rachel says, hey, I can't handle a child being abused. And like, I go, I actually got a scene of that going on there. Do you wish to walk from mm-hmm. the table? Tell me. I, don't have a, I, I personally don't have a problem with, with some of these things. Because I feel like, I feel like uh, having that kind of evil in a world lends to a, a feeling of reality that's taking place in the world. It makes you feel like... It, it helps with immersion, at least to me. Because I, I'm really role-play heavy. And so that helps those emotions to come out when things like that happen. Mm-hmm. But some people, it, it's going to be too much for them. Yeah, and that's 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 the main reason why. This is one of the last examples I think we should give because this is the most powerful point. Because we want to respect our players, make it a good, happy environment, and it is incumbent upon all parties involved to take, to take an active part in this. And to actually go... This is a game for fun and our friends and just having a good time because I'll say this. There's a few people I've gotten closer to just by playing these games because they were just like, yeah, let's have a good time. And I think that's a good point. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's a good place to to stop. So uh, if you like this podcast, if you like this discussion, do follow us on SoundCloud and on on Twitter at 
A Drunk Tarask. That's A Drunk Tarask with two R's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully in the future we'll get on more places, YouTube and other places. So thank you guys. Thank you from the Drunken Trask. May your rolls be high and have a good time. All right. Thank you.